So Aaron, uh, maybe you can show us a little bit of this, what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So IoT Go, I'm over here on uh, the IoT Go uh, GitHub re uh, repo. And uh, here we have- That's a cool uh, logo, by the way. That is a really yeah. awesome logo. Like I, I was looking at this earlier and I'm like, that it's like a light bulb, like that just blew my mind. So whoever made that, they're awesome. Mm -hmm. If uh, there's no logo, it's not cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> It makes it more official, right? Right, yeah, exactly. Um, so I'm gonna jump down here to the getting started page. Um, we're just gonna jump to uh, essentially number two here, getting started with the virtual machine, which is the quickest way. Um, so we'll just open this up in a new tab. And it's still, it's still in the release section. Uh, we'll download the uh, VMDK. We have others here that are available. Uh, which we won't show uh, in this demonstration, but we'll just go ahead and download the VMDK. And what I'm going to do here is uh, drag over uh, VMware. I'm going to go to New, and I'm going to go to uh, Create a Custom Virtual Machine. I'm going to select uh, other Linux uh, 4.0 as just the kernel. Uh, I've had issues with 2.6, uh, so I think 4.0, 4.x is uh, the most uh, accurate. I'm just going to continue here. This is fine. We're going to use an existing uh, virtual disk. Now I got to remember where I just put this. <laughs> I'm hoping. I think it went in the downloads. I think I saw it go in the downloads. It's not there. Oh, here it is. Cool. Nothing sensitive here. We're good. Uh, so you see it's 272 uh, megabytes. We'll just go ahead and go to continue. We don't have to customize settings unless you'd like. The memory is very low. Uh, shouldn't take that many resources. This is just the default uh, configuration. There's another configuration as well. Let's see. Or other exercises, but we won't get into that right now. So we'll just call this IoT Go 2 since I already have a one. And it just starts up. Let it do its thing. In the middle here. It so it's be. actually loading up the Linux kernel right now, loading up the, the rest mm -hmm. of the system in a second, and then we'll have an emulated version of this piece of, of software running, just like it was we would be running on a native IoT device. Yep, yeah. exactly. Cool. Uh, so, so I'm in IoT Go. And granted, we could put passwords on this, um, which would be an exercise in the future with hardware, but we're not doing that now. Uh, but how we want to interface with this, there are a number of different ways. We're going to look at the web interface for now. And uh, should grab an IP address from DHCP. Uh, in this case, we're using a NAT interface. Uh, so it's uh, 172.16.100.217. And so we'll just go to a browser really quick here. Open up another tab. I think it was 2.17. And because we're using self sign cert, here we are. And then there's a couple of hard-coded passwords that are uh, uh, compiled into the firmware. Uh, so we'll use the root account of IoT GOAT hard coded password. That's one. <laughs> it's a super long password. It's kind yeah, of right? <laughs> if you're doing Hashcat, believe me, I try to do it. <laughs> but there are other ways to, to get access to uh, the command line from other than just that user. Um, so in this case, we have um, the OpenWRT kind of uh, interface, or IoT GOAT in this case. Uh, and there's some vulnerabilities within uh, the wireless uh, SSID uh, of uh, IoT GOAT, as well as uh, the cross-site scripting uh, vulnerability, in addition to uh, well, UPnP, of course. Um, the secure mode functionality is disabled. And essentially what we can do um, is modify uh, firewall configurations and in the current uh, deployment uh, to be, and also uh, not only firewall, but even um, DNS, for example, which happens a lot with malware. 
Um, and then in addition uh, to the wireless SSID, which has a cross-site scripting, uh, the vulnerable UPnP, uh, there is also a uh, vulnerability uh, within uh, firewall rules. Uh, it's actually uh, traffic rules. And uh, give me a second. I know it's, I know it's a vanilla um, cross-site scripting. I don't want to demo fail. Um, and it's essentially in the name, uh, in the name section. Okay. And uh, it would, and what that does is uh, this file uh, or this name essentially gets put into uh, a plain text configuration file and gets loaded without any sanitization or output encoding, hmm. uh, for example. Um, and this, this is the web interface. There's some IoT build menus here, camera door lock, things that we're gonna, we're gonna put in uh, at a later date, um, as well as um, you know, some secret pages and it's not so secret. Uh, I think it's not directly accessible, uh, even if you try to do discovery. Uh, Secret USB. developer diagnostics page. There's always got to be one. Absolutely. Right, right. Every nice. product. <laughs> Look at that. You get a reverse shell on this as well. Elevate, elevate your shell. Enable services to not require passwords, as an example. A lot of different methods. Um, but yeah. I'm going to switch over back to, uh, I mean, if you, if you don't want to play with uh, the VM here, uh, what you can do alternatively is SSH in um, with a hard-coded password, but I'll just, I'll just show you uh, the hard-coded passwords here. Uh, there's an IoT Go user uh, and, a, uh, and a root user that have hard-coded passwords. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's possible you could be more successful with the IoT Go user uh, and password cracking that uh, because it, it is based off a of word list. Uh, a well-known IoT malware word list intent. Um, <laughs> so I'll, I'll also show you these other services uh, that are listed in here, uh, which you can't see. Uh, you see there's a service, uh, port 5515. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. So in that case, I'm going to pull up a terminal really quick here, show you guys. Quick, quick uh, demo on how to just attach that. Um, so let's go and see dash nd on seven two. Let me make that bigger for you. That should be big. Oops, too big. On seven two dot sixteen dot one hundred two seventeen. Security. Wait, oh. where's the authentication? Come on. <laughs> exactly. There's a back door right here, obviously. Uh, that runs on startup. Robert, we need to threat model IoT go. Right. <laughs> that, that quickly. Yeah. Um, definitely in need of a threat model. Well, that's that's so cool though, Aaron. Thanks for uh, for kind of showing us the different uh, the the way that people can actually put this into use. This is very neat. Yeah, definitely. Please. You even see one on a high port here. If you were doing, if you were to do an end map, as well, that's probably one of the first pages you would do. See what's listening. Uh, but just a quick example on how to get started uh, from the web interface, uh, and then from a network standpoint, uh, in order to get a shell. And obviously, there's some uh, some things that can be done to disable these, this functionality from a configuration standpoint, as well as from a build standpoint, building firmware. 